compiled my absolute top 25 best Christmas DIY decor ideas for you. And there's a little something for everyone on this from traditional to neutral, from farmhouse to high glam. I hope you enjoy this episode. So let's get started. Welcome to Design to the Nines. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Natalie Callahan, and I'm so glad you could join me today. We are gonna be knocking off three Pottery Barn items. We're gonna be doing it for a tiny fraction of the cost. And our first one is we are gonna be doing some mini street lamps. And I came across this on the Pottery Barn website, and for a set of two, it was $100 for these little Christmas-inspired mini street lamps. And I think that we can do it for a whole lot less. Now, if you've watched my channel, you have seen me use these outdoor spindles before. I've made candlesticks out of them. I've made a wreath holder out of them. I've made several things out of them. And we're going to just add this to the list. You're going to need two of these if you're going to make a set of two. And at my lows, they cost $2.18 each. Now you can kind of pick through these because some of them can be kind of rough. And I have found the ones that are the most smooth. So that way I don't have to sand them down. There's some that are a little bit more rough because these were meant to go outdoors. And I'm going to take these and cut them down outside on my miter saw, so meet me outside. So I wanted to bring you out here and give you a little instruction on a miter saw. It's nothing to be afraid of, I promise you. This just makes work so much easier and the things that you can create when you're comfortable using one of these are awesome. So I just am such a huge advocate for using power tools. I want everybody to be powerful. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this down and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just cut it down really close to this edge right here. And we're gonna leave a little bit of this so that the little lantern has something to sit on that's a little bit sturdy. We're gonna line this up against this so it's nice and snug and it's not wiggling around. Okay, so are you with me so far? You you want to wear your safety glasses. I know I'm going to get comments. Yes, wear a face mask, ear protection and all of that if that bothers you. I'm out in the open air, but I do recommend wearing ear protection and face masks, especially if you have any problems with your lungs or your ears, anything like that. We're going to pull our blade down like so. Make sure we have it where we want it to cut off. And that's just kind of a dry run. We're not pulling anything. We're just kind of seeing where we like it. And that looks like a good spot. In order to start this, you pull this little yellow button here and that releases your trigger, which is here. So you pull this with your thumb and pull this with your hand. And that starts the saw. And then once you've got the saw going, you pull it down and it cuts. So just make sure that your hands are away and you're protected to whatever level you want. And we're gonna make this cut now. Okay, so you can see that we've got a little ledge for this to sit on. So then we're gonna mark to 16 inches down from our new cut. Here I marked it to 19 inches, but decided later it was just too long so ignore the extra few inches for the next part as I do get it how I like in the end. And then once we cut this down we can use this for our second one to use as like a pattern. So let's just go ahead and make this cut. Now if you don't have a miter saw, don't feel bad. You can get this job done with just a simple miter box. And these are not very expensive, maybe 10 to $12 I believe. And you can cut these down by hand. Okay, so now we've got these the same height. They're good to go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take a little sanding block and just kind of sand off any loose fibers from the cut and just so it has a smooth edge. You don't need much there. And then kind of do that on the top as well. Just want it to be as finished as possible. Okay, now we're gonna take our square base. You can get these at Hobby Lobby, four in a pack for $2.99, and then always buy them 50% off so you can get four in a pack for $1.50, which is a great deal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the bottom of our little lantern stand right in the center. And then we're gonna do the same in here and just mark center and we'll measure on the bottom here. So you've got X marks the spot. <laughs> and then we are gonna take 
our drill that has our drill bit on it and we are going to drill down. And then the same on your other, on the bottom here, so it has a starting point. And you don't have to go in very far, just enough so it has something to grip. Now, because we don't want this to wobble, we want to countersink the hole. And you can do that with a larger drill bit if you want, but I actually have a, a countersinker bit that looks like that. And we're gonna put that in our drill. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're gonna countersink the hole. And that's just so the, the screw head doesn't make it wobble. See how easy that is? I know you can do this. We've got this. So make sure you put the regular Phillips head bit back on. And now we're gonna just take our screw, screw it in the bottom of our plaque and into the bottom of our lantern. And then we've got our foundation. There you go, nice and tight and sturdy and you can set that down and you can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like right there. And it's looking good, what do you think? Before we spray paint this, we are gonna glue on our little hook for our mini wreath that was on our inspiration one so that it all gets a nice flat black coat of paint. So now that we've got that spray painted, it's time to add our little mini lantern. This I got at Michael's and it's a six pack. I couldn't find it in smaller amounts, so you had, I had to buy six of them. Six for $12, it makes them $2 a piece if you are making six of them. Now I found this one off of Amazon that looks a little closer to the inspiration ones that's a little bit more ornate and a little bit more frilly. Ours is gonna be a little bit different from the inspiration one where these are so light and because it would be hard to put a drill through this anyways all we're going to do is take my favorite combination which is the e6000 and hot glue combo i like the gorilla hot glue because it's really really str much stronger than other ones and we're going to glue that to the top and then the very last thing we need to do is i have a little bit of this vine left over i just used a little tiny of it last year for some little Christmas ornaments and we are going to create the little wreath that goes on it. We're going to just cut it off and like wire it to itself together and then we can also toss in a couple of red berries. You can just pluck them off another Christmas bush. You can find them at the Dollar Tree and just hot glue those on or you can use white. You can use whatever color combination works for yours and then we've got our little wreaths to hang on the front of them just like the ones from Pottery Barn. All you need to do is put in a tea light and you are done. In the end, you can get these done for about $5 each, making it $10 versus $100 for a set of two. Unfortunately, it is a little bit more because you have to buy a six pack, which would bump up the price to $18 if you were just making it for this pair only and not doing anything else with the other four lanterns, but still a huge savings off of the original. It really is a massive savings and a really adorable look for so much less. So for our next Christmas Pottery Barn knockoff, we are going to be doing the Barn Door Star Art. The original is $199, and that's not including shipping if you need to ship it. So that's very expensive. Now I'm gonna be taking some liberties in size and such. I could go through my scrap pile and build something in the big size that it is. But what I'm gonna be doing today is I picked up this on the Hobby Lobby clearance section for $3. 99 and it's solid wood it's sturdy and it will be a really good foundation for what we're doing now it's a little bit smaller than the original but that's okay because everything we're doing will all work well together and at 399 I like that price so now we're gonna make our barn door by mitering some paint sticks so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set our miter saw at a 45 degree angle and the way you're gonna do that is loosening up this handle here that usually has some kind of of like little lever button that you pull down and then you move until this arrow lines up with a 45 degrees and then you can kind of hear it click into place and then you know it's good and then we're going to tighten that into place and so we know that it's secure so now that's going to
going to cut a 45 degree angle, which is what we want for our square sign. Since this paint stick is a certain length, we don't have a lot of wiggle room on this. So we're going to just take the very tip top part of that first. Let's make some cuts. All right. Now we could swing this back around and go back and forth, but all we need to do really is flip it over. So we cut it this way. We're gonna flip it over and cut it on the other side. So this should fit right up in our corner and we didn't take a whole lot off for it. So that should fit there. And then we can make our marks down here. And then you can see this fits right in there. So now we're gonna do the crossbar. So we'll start by just cutting off the tips of that in a 45. So that fits in here good. And then we can just mark the straight cut that we need to make first. Line that up, make that mark. So we need to swing this back around to zero. And you can hear it click. Hopefully this fits right down in there, which it does. Kind of get off some of the loose fibers here. Mark our 45s here. All right, we'll cut this. Now, once you have your pieces cut, I'm going to just glue these into place with E6000 and hot glue same glues i love them i love the combination because you get the instant stick and then you get the strong hole and once that's dry we are going to paint out the entire barn door in this red chalk paint by waverly it's called lacquer and we're going to just paint out the entire thing in that color Looking back, I wish I spray painted this with a primer prior to painting it as it took three coats of red lacquer chalk paint and even then it didn't fully cover the letter, but I knew that it would be no problem as we still needed to add our star, which it's now time to tape that pattern off. We are gonna start by making a point a few inches lined up with center. Then I cut my tape and start a point and follow the angle of the X. Then to make the sides, I created a template to make these all even and the same all the way around. And then I tape off the sides as you see me doing here, leaving the edges unfinished at this point. Then I repeat this process all the way around. Once you are done, take a straight edge and cut them off square. Now we need to seal our edges with the original red color to prevent bleeding. Once that's dry, we're gonna do three coats of ivory chalk paint. Once that's dry, peel back the tape and that's it. 
Well, ours is a little bit smaller at around $6 versus $200. You can't beat the savings. And even though our star is a little bit skinnier, I love how this turned out. I just think this is awesome. All right, so for our last Christmas Pottery Barn knockoff, we are going to be doing the Mary sign. Now this Mary sign is $80 on their website and we are gonna be taking again some liberties in the sizing of it because I think these sizes will not only work with our budget but it will also create a nice vignette with the other things that we've made on today's episode. We are gonna take this frame that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I liked this and it looked really similar to the thin black frame that was on our Pottery Barn inspiration. We are going to use our one dollar frame and a sheet of chipboard that I got at Michael's for around 50 cents. Start by taking everything out of the frame then we're going to take our cardboard piece from the frame and use it as a template to trace out the size that we need for the chipboard. Then we're going to cut that out and then we're going to take that same red lacquer chalk paint and do a couple of coats with that. Once that's dry, I have provided a free printable in the description box below, or you can make your own. I just typed out the word Mary in the font Halliman and set it at a 137 point font. Then you can take a piece of graphite paper and trace this onto your chipboard and then hand paint it out in ivory chalk paint. Because I don't have that steady of a hand, I'm just gonna use a stencil that I've created on my Cricut machine using this image. I do two coats of ivory chalk paint. And then I peel back the stencil to reveal our image. To give it the sturdiness of a solid wood board, we are going to just place in our chipboard and then put the glass behind the chipboard and it will make it much sturdier and then put everything back into the frame. Now, I cannot believe how cute this $2 piece of art is. I'll take this piece of art any day of the week and keep $78 in my pocket. Thank you very much. <laughs> So it's a whole 57 degrees outside here in Florida. I know you're, there's a lot of you probably going, oh, cry me a river. But that's actually kind of cold for Florida. But we are starting out in the garden center. Um, I'm hoping to find a pot or something that we could use as the base of the lamp. So we're going to see what we can find. Maybe it's inside. I hope it's inside. That's warmer. <laughs> At the bottom of lamp posts, there's usually like a nice decorative um, thing at the bottom. So I'm thinking about getting a pot and just cutting a hole and sliding it on as a little decorative element. So I think this will be perfect. I'm here in the outdoor decking area and they've got several options here. They've got a big spindle that I'm considering and then they also have some little spindles here that I might consider. Those are a little cheaper. Um, I'm just really debating with the lantern that I have. Um, since it's a little bit smaller, I might do this two spindles together or I might do the big bulky one. All right, so we're back from our field trip and I've got my hot glasses on. <laughs> and that's because we're gonna be cutting here on my saw. I ended up deciding on going with the big one. It was only like $13.50 and it was just so much more substantial and more sturdy and I just thought it would work better overall. 
and $13.50 is a great price. If you got this in the indoor one, it would be about $50 to $80. Of course, this is an outdoor one, so the, the finish is much rougher, so we may want to sand it down a little bit. Depends on if you're okay with the rustic look or not. I decided I want to screw a piece of wood into the top part and for that to be flat. So we're just gonna go ahead and flip this up onto my miter saw and take the finial part off. So make sure you wear safety glasses and take extra precautions. We can cut this off, it's not a big deal. We've got this. So let's line this up and here we go. That was such a perfect cut that I can definitely use this somewhere else for something. So I'm gonna hang on to that. Um, but this is a nice flat flush cut and it's gonna be perfect. So now what we're gonna do with this post is I have some end cutoffs from a dowel that I used for another project. So I have these for free, but you can go to any craft store or even Walmart and pick up a dowel. This is a 5 8 inch dowel and it's gonna be less than a buck. So they're really, really inexpensive. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole into the sides of my post and we will just use some Gorilla wood glue and glue these into the sides. And that is going to be perfect for hanging stockings or attaching a wreath or other decor. So these are gonna be very functional as well as decorative. We want our dowels to be on the same spot on either side. So I'm just gonna measure down three inches and then we're gonna find center, which on this is one and three quarter inch. Now I've got a wood boring drill bit, you can see here, and this just drills out really nicely for a dowel so that's what we're going to be using and i'm going to protect my eyes because i think a lot of dust might be flying and then we are going to drill super easy you can handle this i promise you and then we're just going to do it on the other side and there you have your hole for your dowel and now it's a good time to give the whole thing a good just sand down All right, so it's not perfect, but it's a lot less rough. I just ran my electric sander over it. If you really wanted to do a good job, then you would want to take like a hand um, sanding sponge. But this is good enough for me. <laughs> I'm not being super picky on it. Okay, so before we put our dowels in, we are going to build a base for it just so it's more sturdy. I mean, this is pretty sturdy, but you can easily knock that over. And the way we're gonna solve that is we're gonna attach this to the bottom. So this is just for my scrap pile. And then I picked up this, you, you'll remember from our shopping trip. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of cut a rough circle. It's not gonna be a perfect circle because it's out of scrap and that's what's gonna fit. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that on top of it and then we'll cut a hole for this post to set into. This is not gonna be offering any kind of stability. It's just more purely decorative. This is shaping out great. I'm so excited about this. I'm gonna put in four screws just for good measure. I couldn't get this to squeeze out, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna cheat the system here a little bit, and we're just gonna dunk it in the glue and shove that in. Hopefully it will go in. Be nice and snug though, like that's the idea. We'll just clean up any wood glue that's dripping. So now it's almost time to paint it. But before we do so, I was looking at this and I felt like these edges were a little unfinished. So I went searching around my house and we'll see what I got in my pocket. <laughs> All right, so here's what I came up with because I didn't want to spend any money on finials. I went rummaging through some old games and I came up with a couple of chess pieces and I think this is like a mini, I don't know, checker or something. 
So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this mini checker piece and that will finish that off. And then we'll put the little chest piece on the end and that will kind of serve as a little finial. And I think it's gonna work out just great. And I didn't have to spend any money on it. So feel free to do that. When you need like a little something extra, go rummaging around your house. You'd be surprised what you come up with. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use some E6000. It's my go-to adhesive. It's very strong stuff. And then we're also gonna put on a little bit of this hot glue as well, just because it will give us some instant stick. When I originally planned this project, I had a lantern that I was going to use and it was this one. And it's really cute, right? After I got the larger base, I put this on top and it looked like a tiny little head on a big body. It's a really cute lantern and I think it would have worked really well if I'd have gone with a skinnier spindle. But since I went with a bigger one, I decided I needed a bigger lantern. So I went over to Michael's and got this right here. And that looks much better, right? So much better. So I pre-drilled a hole. We are going to line everything up. I think this turned out fantastic and we did it for under 40 bucks. Even with getting the new lantern, it was still under $40, which is a for something this big that we can use year round. We are gonna be building a Santa's workshop, North Pole farmhouse sign. Now this is something that I feel like we could switch out and use year round. So I'm really excited about this project because I think it has applications throughout the year. I have done many projects using these outdoor deck spindles. I just find them very versatile. The price is really great and you can do a lot with them. So this one's actually just a little bit larger than the one I used and it costs $3.18 at Lowe's. But we're gonna have to go outside and use a little bit of power tools to get the job done here. So if you've watched my channel before, you know I like to be powerful. I like to use power tools and I like to empower other people who are a little nervous to use power tools to use them. So primarily we're gonna be using a drill today on this. I'm gonna show you just how much you can do with it, but I'm also gonna be using a whole bunch of stuff out of my scrap wood. I like to keep the cutoffs for my projects because I can make pretty amazing things from those scraps. So rather than tossing them, I hang on to them, even though I probably don't have the space to hang on to them. This is a cut off from our mini lanterns that we just made and this is a scrap from my giant lantern so let's get started building this because it's, it's not going to be hard at all so you're going to take a drill and then we're just going to need to get a bit and we're going to stick that in and i'm going to be using a 5 30 second bit and we're ready to go i'm going to bring you in here and show you kind of what i'm doing a little bit closer okay so we could run a screw all the way through like a longer one, but I decided to just use a dowel screw because I think it's gonna work a little bit better. So what a dowel screw is, kind of self-explanatory. It kind of acts as a dowel, but it also screws in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that there to connect these two, and we're also gonna do that right there to connect the finial. Go sorry about the plane all right real life tv here <laughs> we're gonna pre-drill a hole for center and okay so we've pre-drilled that and i'm just gonna take this off real quick and then how we're gonna put this in is we're gonna actually just put it right in our drill like as if it were a bit and then we're just gonna screw that right down got a little loose but there you go and it's on now that we've got that on we can actually kind of mark where we want it put our drill bit back on and we're gonna pre-drill a hole for this make sure it's right in the center okay 
And then all we need to do now is twist that down into place until it's nice and tight. And this might take just a second to do. Keep twisting until it's nice and tight. There we go. <laughs> and make sure it's like straight. That is on there good, I can assure you. So we've got this on. And now before we put on that top finial, I wanna put on the base so that we can just have that solid and standing up before I screw on the finials. So I've got these two pieces and I'm gonna use some wood glue to kind of connect it as we drill it in. So, okay, this will just kind of help it stick together a bit. This is just some Gorilla wood glue. And we're just gonna flip this over and I'm simply gonna eyeball this. I know that might be crazy to some of you. This is farmhouse style, so it can be a little rustic. So to kind of hold these in place, I'm gonna add a couple of extra screws. So we're gonna use some shorter screws and we're also gonna countersink because we don't want it to wobble on the bottom. We're gonna countersink the holes with a countersink bit. Take that off, take our regular bit. And we're just gonna add these just for security. Okay, so we've got our base built. And now we're gonna take our top piece and mark where we want it to be. And then we're gonna get some measurements just cause this part should be exact. Now you can kind of see that I'm gonna be off centering it a little bit because we want some of that weight to counterbalance what we've got going on up here. So we're not centering this. Okay, X marks the spot. This is where we want to pre-drill. Okay, we're gonna pre-drill this hole. Again, we want to countersink this so it doesn't make anything wobble. So this little countersinking bit is really handy, but in a pinch you can use a larger drill bit. Now we need to put on a regular bit. Okay, then you're gonna wanna take a three inch screw and put that down there, get it started. And then we are gonna attach this. We're gonna line this up. And actually, I'm gonna put on a little bit of wood glue just to kinda add to the sturdiness of this. Okay, here we go. That looks pretty good, it's really sturdy. Now we're gonna add the finial and the decorative brackets. How adorable is that? <laughs> so now it's time to add our decorative finial. And this is basically the same process as we did attaching the arm earlier using the dowel screw. So we will mark the center of the finial and the center of the post and we will pre-drill holes there. And then we will take the screw and put it into our drill just like as if it were a drill bit and screw it down into the post. And then we will hand screw the finial on top, nice and tight. Now, if you don't have an extra finial laying around, these are pretty easy to find at a craft store or at a home improvement store. And you should be able to find one for pretty inexpensive. Now, this is not the best camera angle, so my apologies for that. But next I attached the little bracket, which I picked up at Walmart for $3. I did this by first marking the holes and pre-drilling them. And then because of the weird angle of the bracket, I had to hand screw the screws into place. While this is decorative, it also adds stability. Next, it was time to add some eye hooks, which I pulled out of a Dollar Tree picture hanging kit. I laid down the sign from the Dollar Tree that I was going to be using to see where the holes needed to go. I marked those and then I pre-drilled them with a very tiny bit and then I screwed the eye hooks in for us to hang a sign from. I love this. Now we're making this for Christmas, but this is gonna be versatile for any time of year. This is something that we can keep out year round and just switch out the sign. And now we're gonna just spray paint it all black and I'm using a flat black 
spray paint. It's got paint and primer in one. And then we've got a really awesome hanging sign stand that's totally farmhouse and so cute. So I'm excited. We need to quickly drill a couple of holes at the bottom of the sign because I have an arrow sign that I wanna hang from the bottom of the top sign. I hope that makes sense. So we just line up these holes and mark them and pre-drill some holes that we might be able to attach some chain to before we head back inside. Now let's finish out this adorable hanging sign. Both of the signs that I'm using are from the Dollar Tree and were already in my stash. I first start by taking the sticker off the back of the larger one by using a heat gun, which makes the process a lot easier. Then I do a quick sand down of the entire thing just to make sure I get any residue off. Then I take the arrow and paint the front and back of that rich black chalk paint. Then I paint the front and the back of the larger sign in two coats of white chalk paint. If you are curious about the larger sign dimensions, it is eight inches by 12 inches. Then I used an SVG file that I bought off of Etsy and I will link it below for $1.59. Now I cut out the stencil using this SVG file, but if you don't have a vinyl cutting machine, you could still purchase the SVG file and print it out on your printer and use the technique where you place graphite paper underneath and trace it onto your sign, then fill it in with paint. I show this technique on my channel all of the time, so don't feel like you have to have a vinyl cutter to get this sign completed you can do it that way i used a combination of rich black chalk paint and celery chalk paint colors to two-tone the sign and then for the arrow i simply cut out the words this way and painted one side in the celery color that matches the larger sign. And I did a couple of coats of that. Then we remove our stencil. Now it's time to hang our sign, and I used one of the Dollar Tree Planner hanging chains. These are pretty easy to come by, I have found, but it will depend on your store. I took the hooks up from the top of the chain and used that part to hang the top of the sign. And in the end, I used three links on the bottom to hang the arrow, even though I have more in this picture. And then I took one extra one and kind of opened it up and cut it in half and kind of created a loop to attach the arrow to on the bottom side as you see me doing here. And then we are done. This has got to be one of my favorite Christmas DIYs ever, and maybe one of my favorite DIYs ever. I just love the idea of this and just how it ended up turning out. And please excuse the unfinished floors on either side of the fireplace. I just ordered the cabinets that are going into that section this morning, so I'm excited that will be coming up in a future episode. Now, I was able to get this done for about $12 using stuff for my stash and that includes purchasing the SVG file and the stencil. Even if you had to buy some of these items, I still feel like you could get this done for well under $20 and for something that you can use year round by simply switching out the sign and how cute it is, I think this is a good deal. I'm totally obsessed with this sign. What do you think? We are going to be making a North Pole sign and I'm going to be using some scrap brick paneling that I have left over from my fireplace project. I have a whole bunch of these scrap pieces and I thought it would make for a really cool art piece, but you could use any kind of scrap wood you want. Honestly, the image alone is really cool. First of all, we're going to go cut this down to the appropriate size. I don't want it quite this big, so I'm going to cut it down. Right, 
So we have our brick panel, the size we want it. Now we're gonna add a frame on it. And I'm just gonna be using some one and a half inch wide poplar that you can get really inexpensively at the home improvement store. I'm gonna be doing miter cuts on my miter saw over here. But if you don't have a miter saw, don't feel bad. You can use one of these simple miter boxes. They're very inexpensive, maybe 10 to $12. And you can do this by hand, especially with how thin this is. But you know, I love my power tools. So we're gonna cut this on my miter saw it makes a really nice clean cut and then it also makes quick work of it. So let's get going. <laughs> So I take my brick panel back inside and do a very intentional bad paint job. <laughs> Just using some white chalk paint. The idea is the brick wall looks old and I think we achieved that here. Then we paint our frame out in that same black chalk paint. Now we are going to attach our frame using E6000 and Gorilla Hot Glue using my Sure Bonder glue gun, which is cordless and totally awesome. Then we put our stencil of the image that I purchased for $3, and I will put that link in the description box below. Isn't it just the cutest image ever? I mean, seriously, it's so cute. Again, if you do not have a vinyl cutter, go ahead and buy the image and do the graphite paper technique to transfer the image onto your board. Now I very carefully peel back the stencil and then kind of press it down into the creases as best I can. But we're not looking for perfection here because this is totally rustic farmhouse. Also, where I normally seal the edges of my stencils with the original paint color, since we are going for more of a rustic look, I just took a sponge stenciling brush and pounds in the celery colored chalk paint onto our stencil. And if a little leaks here and there, it's not a big deal. We want this sign to look like it's worn out over time. Then we remove the stencil and do any extra distressing we want with a little sandpaper. And that's it. Because I used a piece of scrap to make this sign, it only cost me about five to six dollars to make and that includes purchasing the image. Even if you had to buy the 12 by 24 inch piece of wood, you could find that for a few dollars and get this done for eight to ten dollars. But of course, I always recommend trying to get your hands on some free scrap wood. I am totally obsessed with the sign. It literally turned out even better than I had hoped for, but what do you think? Next up, we're gonna be making a cookies for Santa tray, and we are gonna be just using this scrap from my fireplace build. It's amazing what you can build with scrap wood. It really is. And I thought that we could just turn this into a cookies for Santa tray that you could use all during the holidays, but especially on that nice Christmas Eve night. I'm just gonna start out by prefacing that this tray turned into the bane of my existence, but I learned so much from it that I can now share with you and the end result I'm happy with. I start out by painting the entire board in white chalk paint. My first plan was to do an image transfer technique that you've seen me do many times on this channel using Liquitex gel matte medium. This is actually normally a fantastic technique and many of you have been asking me whether or not you can print this out on an inkjet printer at home. And honestly, I had never tried that before. I had always gone to Staples and used their self-serve laser jet printer because I really love the print quality. So I wanted to try it out on this project since it was going to be just using black and white print anyway. Let me just tell you, this was a total fail. 
So the answer is yes, you need to print your image with a laser jet printer if you are going to do this technique. If you do, then you will have a successful result doing the image transfer technique. But I was not so lucky this time. <laughs> Normally how you would do this technique, you would do a thick layer of Liquitex matte gel medium as you see me doing here, and then you lay your reversed image face down onto the gel medium while it's wet and smooth it out. Then you let it dry for a minimum of two hours or until it's fully dry. Then you're supposed to get a bowl of water and a soft cloth and remove the paper very gently and leave the image. This is where it went wrong for me. The ink should have been very saturated black and maybe slightly distressed, which is fine, but this literally took off chunks of the black and left a totally faded look everywhere else. So this was a fail. I like to share my fails with you just so that you can learn from them. And hey, this is real life DIYing. So I decided what I would do is just go over the faded look in a black paint pen, which I thought would work. This didn't work either. <laughs> and I think a lot of the problems just ended up being from the gel matte medium, the residue that was still on the tray. While I was waiting for the paint pen to dry, I decided to proceed and do the French stripes on either side of the tray. Now you can see how I'm taping it off by watching me here, but I do a wider stripe followed by two smaller stripes on either side using some washi tape. and then I very carefully paint on red craft paint. Again, I'm going for more of a rustic look this time, so I did not do my normal striping technique that you've seen me do on here before. Once the paint was dried, I peeled back everything to reveal the stripes. I distressed the paint pen lettering and the stripes and then I wiped it off with a wet rag and it just totally made everything disappear. Almost like I hadn't painted or done anything on the lettering and it made a black smeary mess. At this point, I decided to sand everything down and use a stencil and that's what I did in the end. Now I did design this image so I will provide a link to it in the description box below. Then I attached my handles, I get these at Hobby Lobby for 50% off for $3 a piece. Even though this ended up being kind of a headache for me, in the end I'm really happy with how it turned out and I think it's an adorable place to put cookies or serve holiday treats and drinks and the only expense I had really was the handles. The rest of everything I used was just supplies that I already had on hand so even when you calculate a little bit of cost for that, in the end this cost me around $6.50 to complete and I think it is so cute, so chic, so farmhouse but what do you think? I just wanna briefly tell you about Antique Candle Company. I love Antique Candle Company's scents. They are amazing. This time they're featuring homemade gingerbread, tree farm, and Christmas Day. They are all very Christmassy scents. I have to tell you though that Christmas Day is one of my absolute favorite scents of theirs and they smell so good. To learn more about Antique Candle Company, I'll put a link in the description box below. So I had this left over from an upcycle thrift trash treasure project from the spring and my original inclination was just to toss it. But you all told me, don't throw those away. You could turn it into something else. I also have this beautiful faux mercury glass space that I picked up at a thrift store for a couple of dollars. I've had it for a while. So my thought is, is we are going to make one of those beautiful hoop arrangements. You may have seen them on Pinterest and we are going to get the wire hoop from out of this shade and we're going to use this wide one and we're going to place it right here. <laughs> So we need to get the metal hoop out of this lampshade and I just do this by ripping off the edge banding and then taking a straight edge blade and cutting through. It came out actually rather easily. But there was a little bit of glue residue so I just took a little sandpaper and sanded that off and it was ready for spray paint which I spray outside in a gold color getting both sides and then I let it dry. If you don't have a leftover shade for your light fixture 
Then I have a solution for you. They actually sell these gold hoops already at Walmart. I think this package of three in three different sizes costs like $2.84. So that's not only affordable, but it's ready to go. Now we need to add our hoop to our mercury glass container. So first I put in some dry floral foam. Then I push our hoop down into the foam. Now, just as a little tip for you, it would be better if you took a knife and kind of slice it down the middle. It would make it slide in there much easier. So that's my recommendation to you. And then after I get it in, I just use some green floral tape to hold it into place but then I felt like the hoop needed a little extra added support so I put some hot glue down in the crack of where I pushed it down into now it's time to arrange now filming florals is always a bit challenging for me <laughs> I'm trying to get better at it but hopefully you can get the idea here We are going to be creating an L-shaped asymmetrical arrangement that kind of follows the curves of the hoop. I didn't go out and buy any special greenery or florals for this arrangement. I just raided my Christmas greenery that I already had on hand. I believe the variety actually makes it look a little bit more interesting. I only used a single glittered magnolia flower because it was so large, I felt like it didn't need much more than that. One thing I like to keep in mind when I am arranging flowers is to vary heights and textures. Allow things to bend naturally like you would see in nature. With this arrangement, we are trying to create an L, which means exactly what it sounds like, loosely forming our arrangement in that shape of the L. And then I also added some gold Dollar Tree Christmas ornaments and I just hot glued those into place. To fill in the holes in the back, I just take some Spanish moss, which was a little bit brighter green than I would have liked it to be, honestly, but it's in the back and you really don't notice it in the end. Now, you could have left it like this, but I thought it would be fun to add a few small snowflake ornaments from the Dollar Tree, and I hung it using fishing line. And I actually think that this is a nice little touch. So this metal hoop was just something that I was gonna trash. And I pulled this arrangement together entirely from my stash. This is really high-end looking, very beautiful and very unique. So you were all right. I am so glad I kept this lampshade. It's perfect in this arrangement. So I've got a whole bunch of broken jewelry, missing earrings or missing the pair. I've got some hooks that have pieces missing out so they just don't look good. So it's not something that I would want on display, but I don't want to just toss it and sending it to the thrift store wouldn't make sense because it won't be useful to them either if it's not useful to me. So what I'm going to do is we are going to upcycle it into a blingy Christmas tree. Now I've seen these go for a boatload of money. You're going to need to start out with a foam Christmas tree. You could do much larger than this one. I don't have a ton of broken jewelry here, so this will be just fine for us. Now, it might seem strange that I'm going to wrap my cone in poster board. I know some of you might ask why I'm doing this, and if you could just
just use regular poster board and not the foam to make the tree because I know a lot of people make cones that way. My concern was the weight of all of the jewelry combined with the hot glue and all of the extras would make it kind of cave in and not very sturdy. So I do suggest that you use this cone floral foam underneath. Also, I'm going to be using some rhinestone ribbon that is kind of got a mesh matte filling. So I didn't want to see the texture of the floral foam. So after we get this poster board cut down to size and hot glued into place, we're going to take this outside and spray paint it gold. So that way when we see through the ribbon mesh, you will see a really pretty gold finish. W once it's dry, I take it inside and hot glue it in a real silver candlestick that I got at the thrift store for only two dollars. I thought this would make for a fancy tree trunk for our really fancy Christmas tree. Then I take the rhinestone ribbon that I mentioned before and start to hot glue it to the entirety of our tree. Now I know the Dollar Tree sells sheets of rhinestone wrap so that would be an affordable option but I've had this ribbon on hand forever and I just decided this was a good opportunity to use it. Now, once it's completely wrapped in our rhinestones, I take the top of an old perfume bottle that I actually used in another DIY in the spring, but I decided to reuse on this piece permanently. So don't throw away those perfume toppers. And I treat it as a tree topper. And then I add a broken snowflake bracelet piece to the front of this perfume topper and I think that looks really beautiful. Then we are going to take the rest of my broken jewelry pieces, my broken blingy hooks and start to create a pattern and design. Now I only had enough jewelry to do kind of a design on the front side but you could literally cover the entire thing in jewelry if you wanted and had the jewelry to do it. And this also might be a piece that you can work on over time and add to as you have broken pieces or missing their match pieces of jewelry come upon you and how you design yours will kind of depend on the jewelry that you are working with and also your own taste so just let your imagination go wild you can add little crystals from the dollar tree they also have pearl like rose so just keep going until you feel like it's finished and feel free to go totally over the top on this one i did So all of this jewelry would have either ended up in the trash or just hanging out in my jewelry box, taking up space. But instead we have this really glamorous, really high end Christmas decor piece that is amazing. I just love this trash to treasure makeover. But what do you think? So for our next high end upcycle, I picked up this sign at a thrift store many years ago for $4.99 and I have carted this around for a couple of moves, always having the best of intentions to use it somewhere because I thought it was relatively cute, but alas, it still sits with no purpose. <laughs> So instead of sending it back to the thrift store, I have come up with a really good idea to turn it into a piece of decor that I know I'm gonna love for Christmases to come. We're gonna be making a merry and bright sign. So we're gonna need to start out by removing the wire and hooks from this piece and patching the holes with some putty. After that dries, we can just sand that down and then we are going to spray paint the center part all matte white. And once that is fully dried, we are going to tape off the center part and spray paint the frame gold. Now 
Now we are going to add vinyl and I will be using my Cricut Joy to cut it because I found this fun metallic permanent vinyl for the Cricut Joy and we are going to use two different kinds. One in a shimmery gold and the other a holographic silver. I liked the combination. We've used the silver and gold in all of our pieces today. I typed Mary in Stay Girly and Bright in Bebis New. <laughs> I probably slaughtered that font name. Because I am turning bright into a marquee, I pre-added the holes where I wanted to drill into the vinyl. This will make drilling so much easier and no issues with the vinyl when we drill. Then I take two strands of fairy lights that I already had on hand and thread a light into each hole and add some hot glue onto the back to secure it into place. Now, if you use a silicone finger cover and touch it, it speeds up the cooling process a lot and it doesn't burn your finger, so that's nice. <laughs> I also hot glue the switch into place. I ended up using two strands of fairy lights. Now this piece went from rustic to glam with very little effort and I think this piece turned out so fun and I just love it. All of these pieces that we made today really work well together as part of a vignette and they also pair nicely with my other mercury glass Christmas trees that I already had. So I love how this turned out. I love how all of them turned out and I hope you like them too. I am gonna turn these three pots into topiaries that spell out joy. And I think this is gonna be really cute. Now, I got these pots at Hobby Lobby, 50% off. They're originally $3.99. Now, you could go the Dollar Tree route and just get something similar to this. They have d different kinds of metal pots there. And you could paint it out red and glitter it and whatever, but I had these already and I thought that the price was really good. So now for the crazy element that's gonna seem a little off the wall, but will save you a ton of money and it's gonna be perfect for what we're doing. We are gonna be using some metal coat hangers. Now, these things are kind of becoming sparse, but I bet everybody has these already in their cabinets and they're gonna work perfectly for what we're doing. Now, I've used these to do a handle on an Easter basket and they work out great. Now, what we're gonna use these for is to shape all of the letters. So what I've done is I've created a free printable and I'll link that in the description box below where we're just gonna be kind of using this as a template just so we get the shapes right. And so we're gonna just lay this down and take the metal hangers and just shape them using this as a guide so we can get them all kind of consistent in size and shape and this will be very helpful to that. So that's the purpose of that. You can you don't need to use the printable if you don't want to. You can do it freehand. But for me, I, I just want them to be consistent. So we're gonna use that. Now you will notice that I straightened out the hook part and this will be the part that will stick into the foam, which will be coming up here in just a second. You'll also wanna have some wire cutters handy to clip off any excess wire on the O, I just clipped it in the middle of the hanger and kind of twisted it upon itself and kind of just shaped it. And obviously the Y was the easiest of the bunch. Once we've formed our letter, we're gonna take various greens and kind of just fill them in like a topiary. So I'm gonna start with some of this really tiny ivy that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. And I think the variegation on it's gonna add a lot of texture. It's gonna be really interesting and the tiny size of it's gonna be perfect. Now how we're gonna do this part is we are gonna wrap the ivy around wire to disguise it using hot glue here and there to hold it into place.
To give it a little bit of a Christmas feel, I got some small Christmas greenery and then I hot glue it here and there. And then I add some sugared berries and leaves, which will tie in our red glittered pots. Now it's time to work on the foundation. I take my hot pen and cut down my foam to fit in my pots and fill it up. Then we press each little topiary down in the center of each pot. I cover up the foam with some Dollar Tree moss and just to make it look like it's an actual topiary, I add a little bit more of ivy here and there into the foam. I just absolutely adore these cute topiaries. They're so festive and cute and a good reminder of the joy of this Christmas season. But what do you think? All right, so for our next joy-themed DIY, it's, it's really easy, honestly, because I've done most of the work for you. You're gonna have to do a little work though. <laughs> a printable that I have designed that has the lyrics to joy to the world, and I have made it into a 16 by 20 size. Now, if you go into Staples and have them print it on an engineered print, which they should do because it's basically in blacks and whites and there's nothing crazy about it, this this will cost you about $1.89 to print out. So that's a good deal. And this printable is one of my free printables that will be included in that link I mentioned before below. And all we're gonna do is put it in a frame that we already have. Now I use this frame for everything in all of my Way Cool Dirt Sheep episodes. It's one that I've had on hand. I've just painted it out in black chalk paint and I use it and switch out the print over and over and over again. If you watch my channel, you'll know that's true. And this is actually kind of a similar idea as to something I did last Christmas. Then what you need is a small wreath. Now I got this one out of the Target dollar spot, I think last year or the year before, but it was super inexpensive. I wanna say it was like $3. It was a really good price. You want it to fit within this 16 by 20 size. So all we're gonna do is put our print in the frame and then we're gonna take our wreath and kind of center it on our frame. So just pick a ribbon that matches the color scheme and decor of your own home. So I'm going to just take this red glittery ribbon and we are going to kind of feed it through our wreath and make sure that we have enough excess that we can create like a loop and wrap it around our wreath and tape it with some tape on the back. And then you have a very easy very easy, joy-filled Christmas DIY. You could display it with the wreath, or I thought it also looked really cute without the wreath displayed behind the joy topiaries. Which way is your favorite to display it? All right, so for our next DIY that will hopefully bring a little Christmas joy into your life, we are gonna be making some Christmas hurricanes. Now, I'm not a big Dollar Tree fanatic. I don't do like tons and tons of Dollar Tree things. I'm very choosy and very picky, but for this next one, I saw these, and these were newer in my Dollar Tree, but I thought that they would make the most perfect hurricanes. So I picked up several of these forever ago. Now they sell something a little similar to this. I've seen it on their website. So if you can't find a candlestick like this in the store, you can order them off of their website. Even though they are already a black finish, it was a little bit flat. So I took some satin spray paint to give it just a nice finish, which gives it more of a high-end feel. After they are dried, I took them inside and used a combination of E6000 glue and Gorilla Hot Glue and glued our glass hurricanes to the candlestick base. 
Then while those are drying, I took out a piece of clear contact paper and sprayed on a little frosted glass spray paint because I felt like without it, it was not quite as opaque as I wanted it to be. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Once that's dry, I have another free printable to help you complete this next part where you are going to trace the letters in reverse on the back part of the contact paper. This way your markings are on the paper and not on the part that you are going to use. Then you can just simply cut out each letter. The reason I am using contact paper and not just applying this to the glass through etching or another means is after the holidays are over, I can just easily peel off these letters and they can fit into my everyday decor. So next up, we're just gonna peel off the back of the contact paper and stick them very carefully to the glass hurricane, trying to get them all at the same level. Now you could be done here, but I wanted it to be kind of like a centerpiece for my table. So I found these little candle wreaths at the Dollar Tree and I didn't think they were too bad, but I thought that they could definitely use a little extra something something. So we're gonna just take some of the same greenery that we used on our Joy Topiaries, plus some mini pine cones and fill these in a little bit using a little hot glue to hold them into place. I also clip an opening so that I don't have to slide them onto the candle base. I can just kind of open it up and then rewrap around the candle stick. I set these on a wood bread tray that I already had on hand and now I have a very cute centerpiece that will give me joy during the Christmas season. We are gonna be making a Christmas sign that says joy to the world. I actually have a canvas that we kind of inherited when we bought this house and it's a little juvenile for my sons now they're a little bit grown up and this not quite big boy enough for them so rather than just toss it i'm going to turn it into something that is going to be beautiful for my christmas decor now if you don't already have a canvas on hand i think that this could work out great on one of the dollar tree canvases that i'm showing you here to match some of my existing decor, I decided to paint the whole canvas in a celery chalk paint. And once that's dry, we are going to take a free printable again, <laughs> lots of free printables, and we are going to tape that down to our canvas and place a piece of graphite paper underneath and trace out this entire image. I wanted to do this this time around to kind of show you that you can do it this way and get a great look, but I really do love to use my Cricut machine to create a stencil. It just creates a nice look, but I think you'll see in the end that this turned out really well. Once we get it traced on, I take a white paint pen and trace the outer edges with that. but I felt like it was a little translucent, so I took some white chalk paint and filled it in on the larger letters and did a couple of coats of the paint pen on the smaller letters. Thank you. 
Once that was complete and dried, I decided to distress this just a little bit with some sandpaper to kind of give it a little bit of a chalkboard feel. And that's it. This is near free for me because I used something that I that would have ended up at a thrift store. And I really like how this ties into the other decor that we've been creating over the past several weeks. But what do you think? I am making a joyful and triumphant pillow and I've created this free printable as a template for you to complete this project. I love that saying joyful and triumphant. If there were ever a year that we needed to be triumphant and triumph over, it's this year, right? So I love that little reminder to be joyful and triumphant. And so we are gonna put that saying on a pillow and I ordered these off of Amazon and they're very inexpensive and I'll put a link for these in the description box below, but they kind of have a linen look to them, kind of has like that oatmeal finish. Now I'm going to be cutting mine on my Cricut machine and doing it in a heat press vinyl and just ironing it on. But I know that not everybody has a vinyl cutter. So I've come up with a couple of different options for those of you who don't have a vinyl cutting machine. So with this free printable, you could print it on a like iron on printable and do it that way. So you can just print that on your printer and then iron that onto your pillow cover, or you could also paint it on. Now you can follow the same technique as we did on the joy to the world sign. Now I did the same technique on a tote bag in my Christmas handmade gift DIY video recently and it worked out great. But I do decide to break out my Cricut machine this time around and cut this image on a heat transfer vinyl and weed out the excess just leaving our image. Once our image is ready then we preheat our easy press to 300 degrees and then we let it warm up the fabric for about five seconds. Then we lay down our image and kind of center it up. And then we press it for about 30 seconds on each area. And then we flip it over at, to the back and do an additional 15 seconds. Then once it's cool, you can peel it back and if it doesn't seem to be, be sticking down well, then you can repeat this process again. Then it should come off just fine and then all you need to do is put it on any pillow and how cute is this? I just love this pillow and I love the saying. So I've escaped my house, which if you all have kids e-learning right now, you know that that's exciting. I'm here at Ikea because we are doing some Christmas Ikea hacks for this episode. So let's get shopping. Okay, I'm here in the blanket section and I found two blankets right behind me that I think will work. Unfortunately, this one right here, they don't have any more, at least not in this area, but I got the last one of these. I'm all checked out, now let's see what I can make with this. So I'm back from shopping at Ikea and I've got a few hacks for you that I think you're gonna like for Christmas. First, I have a question for you. Raise your hand if you like those ivory colored stockings that have bird trim on them. You know, you've seen them on Pinterest. They're very on trend. Well, for my first DIY, I want to take this blanket that we found on our shopping trip and convert it into some Christmas stockings that kind of echo the ones that you've been seeing. So the first thing we're gonna start out by doing is putting together our pattern, which I actually found on fabric.com. I really like the large size of this and I will link it in the description box below. On the first page, it shows you how to put this pattern together. 
It also comes with a pattern for the cuff and some pom-poms, but I am doing those two items a little differently on mine, so I am not using those ones. Now, I start out by cutting the, out this pattern with paper scissors because I have a set of scissors that is only used to cut fabric with. If you use your fabric scissors to cut paper, it dulls them out very quickly. Then you're going to tape all of your pattern pieces together and then you'll have your stocking pattern. I decided to line my stocking for a couple of reasons. First, I felt like this knit was not super tightly woven together, so I felt like things could easily poke out. And probably the biggest reason was because when we put this knitted blanket through our sewing machine, it will feed through much nicer and snag less. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So I start out by cutting my liner out of an old bed sheet that is clean and in good condition. Now, I've been cutting away at this sheet for a while now and it's really gone a long way. I fold this in half to double it up so that I can cut two pieces at the same time. Then I repeat this exact same process with our Ikea blanket, trying to get the top part lined up against the edges so I don't cut that part as you see me doing here. Now, I didn't pin this down either time. I just put my tape to act as a weight on top of it and hold it into place, but you could pin it into place if you feel more comfortable with that. Once you have all of your pieces cut out and prior to sewing, I quickly ironed my liner and then I sandwiched the liner around either side of the knitted stocking pieces. And then I just got some new fabric clips, which I decided which is a better way to go this time around because it will hold everything a little bit better than pins would in my opinion. I will link these awesome clips in my description box below. And now we just need to do a straight stitch all around the sides, but not along the top just yet. But don't worry, we will address that in a minute. Now make sure you zigzag all of the edges as we want it to stand the test of time and this will just really secure that up. Now for the trim. I actually picked up this fur ribbon at Michael's after Christmas last year for 90% off, making it really cheap for me. But they do have this same fur ribbon again this year. But you could use any kind of fur that you want, and if you're cutting it out from like a piece of fur fabric, then you could use that cuff pattern that we didn't use earlier and that is included as part of the fabric.com pattern. So I just cut enough of this fur ribbon that to match ours and give myself a little bit of a seam. Then I place right sides together and sew a seam on that edge. Then what we're gonna do is place that ribbon tucked down inside of the stocking. Then we are gonna stitch a straight stitch very close to the edge, really close. And since both of these are finished edges, we should be okay sewing that close to the seam and we don't need to worry about it fraying. And the reason I'm doing that is because we don't have a huge cuff of that fur. If you were cutting out for a fur cuff and you had more wiggle room, then you don't need to be as, as close to the edge as I went. Now we need a hook. So I take six inches of the ribbon and I cut it and then I cut it again lengthwise and fold that in half. 
Now the next part, I did not get a very good close-up shot of me sewing this into a place, and I apologize for that. But basically, I form a loop and stitch it into place inside the top of the stocking, and that stitching will be hidden once we fold down our fur cuff. Now all of the really cute versions of these stockings all have fur pom-poms. And this is actually a lot easier to put together than you might think. Now, even though our pattern came with a pattern to make these pom-poms, I think that the way I made them works a lot easier. So our ribbon is about three and a half inches wide and I cut about four inches of length. So it was essentially a square-ish. <laughs> and then you can see me taking some yarn with a very large needle and stitching up and down all the way around the perimeter, leaving a long string at each end. And then I kind of tug on this and it acts kind of like a drawstring bag. And then before we pull it all of the way, we take some batting and stuff that inside and then we pull it as tight as we can to end tucking in any loose edges or anything kind of down inside the pom-pom and then you just tie that off with a double or triple knot but leave all of the excess yarn for now now you're going to need two of these pom-poms Then we're gonna take one of the yarn strings and thread it back through that needle again and pull it through our stocking underneath the fur trim on the side that you want these pom-poms to sit. And then you simply just double or triple knot it into place again and then stagger the second one as you see me doing here. And that's it. These were surprisingly easy to put together and I think that they look amazing. I am really happy with how these turned out. What do you think? Now, I didn't go all out staging for these final products at this point because I'm in the middle of finally installing my side bookcases on either side of my fireplace. I want to get this done before I fully deck out my living room for the Christmas holiday and do my decorate with me. And here's just a little sneak peek of what I've got going. So for our next Ikea hack, we are gonna be using the Strea Star. Hopefully I said that right, I don't know. And it looks like this. I've got an idea using this that I think is really fun, but in order to do it, we need to get a little powerful, and for that, we need to go outside. So I really feel like it's my mission to help you feel powerful and discover talents that you never thought you could do before. So we are going to be building a wood tree, sort of, a foundation for a wood tree, but we are going to be working with some power tools. Now you don't have to use these tools to get this job done. I just find that it makes it so much easier and I just want to demystify the use of power tools. So we're going to build our tree. I had some little tutorials to show you just how easy it is to work with power tools, but apparently I was having some audio issues that I was unaware of and my mic dropped off. So I won't be doing those tutorials this time and I will just walk you through how I built this DIY instead. But I do show you how to use these tools in other episodes. Today I am working with some scrap wood, but you could probably get this project done with just one one by two, which is just a couple of dollars. Now I take two pieces of my scrap wood and kind of angle it how I wanted, which ended up being 50 degrees and then you don't end up needing to cut on the other side. On the bottom, I cut it at 15 degrees on both sides. Now, there's a lot of flexibility in this project as far as height, so just kind of work with it and see how you like it. The bottom piece then just needed to be cut to fit, 
no weird angles here, just straight cuts. Then I have this little wood box that I picked up from Michaels a couple of years ago that I wanted to use as a base, but I wanted to put a little tree trunk into it. So I cut a couple of pieces of wood the same size. Then I sanded off any rough spots. Now it's time to assemble our tree. I use a little wood glue and my nail gun to put this together. You could also use a hammer and nails if you like, but having a nail gun sure makes life easier and a lot less smashed fingers. <laughs> I just put on a little wood glue on each joint and drive a couple of nails into each spot. I start at the top and work my way to the bottom And I create a little tree trunk with two pieces by centering them on the bottom. Then I attach it to our wood box. I mark around where I'm going to nail them in on both sides so I know where to drive in my nails on the bottom side of the box. Back inside, I use antiquing wax on the tree trunk and then I wrap the tree in moss. Then I add some embellishments to the top with some greenery, bells, and some stars. Then I wrap some fairy lights down the side. And insert our star. Now I plan to do a little bit more in the way of staging this up a little bit better, possibly varying the heights of my nativity set and maybe adding a little bit more greenery and snow. But for now, I love the foundation of this and I love using this little star with my nativity set. What do you think of this? So these white poinsettias are pretty, but I think we can design them to the nines and take them up a notch. And I have these white poinsettias that I put on my Christmas tree and they're kind of glittery and flocked. And so this is the inspiration for ours and we're gonna be kind of mimicking this look on the Ikea ones. Now this is a really easy Ikea hack. We're gonna start by taking some celery green craft paint and a little water. And then a little bit later, I added in a little bit more Kelly green just so it was a little bit fresher and I water it down. Now I used a makeup sponge to kind of sponge this into the creases of our poinsettia petals but you could also use a paintbrush and just kind of work that in lightly. And then once it's dry I took it outside and placed the pots inside grocery bags to protect them while I flocked it. Then to add a little sparkle, I used Mod Podge and then I sprinkled it with fine glitter and chunky white glitter as well. Then I took them out of the grocery bags and put them in larger black pots just to give them a little bit more visual weight, but this part is optional. And here is our inspiration poinsettia and our potted Ikea poinsettia hack. I really like this. I really think that they are very pretty and it's just that little extra oomph that it needed. And it was super easy to do as well.
We are going to be doing a decorative letter to Santa. As you can see, I've got this free printable here. It says the Callahan family up here in the corner. On the printable that I will be providing you, it will be blank in this area. So you'll need to do something on your own to fill that in. This is not my actual address, just as an FYI. Now I print this out at Staples in a color print. And I believe to print out this size was, I think, like 75 cents. The font that I used was Shadows into Light 2, and I did it in a 28 point font. Or you can just do something that looks similar to it. It doesn't have to be this exact font. I'll put a link for all of the printables that I'm gonna be doing in the description box below. You're not gonna wanna miss it, because I've got some really cute stuff. Then I have this wood piece. I ordered a bunch of these in bulk off of Amazon, but I think you can pick up something similar at a craft store, at Hobby Lobby. This is 12 by 24 inches. However, we only need 12 by 19 inches. And I think I've seen some that are 12 by 18 inches already cut, ready to go at Hobby Lobby and some other craft stores. I'm gonna go out and cut this down with my saw, but you could get away with 12 by 18, no problem. And then I'm gonna be using some of these paint sticks, like the long ones. They come in th three in a pack. So what we're gonna start out by doing is we are gonna take some white chalk paint and we are going to paint the entire base of our wood in a white chalk paint so it's got a good foundation. So while we're painting stuff, we're gonna paint our paint sticks in a black chalk paint so that the frame is black. You could stain them too if you want a stained frame, if that's the look that you wanna go for, but I'm gonna do black because I've got black in the font and I think it will just tie it all nicely together. I like to paint these with a the handle still on them and then cut off what I need later and then just do a little bit of touch up paint. That way I can just paint like any side that I want and not worry about getting my hand dirty. Now I might cut mine down on my miter saw just because it's a little bit easier for me, but I've cut these down with a Dollar Tree hacksaw before, so that's no problem at all. Before we add the frame, we are gonna now do an image transfer technique. You know that if you've been watching my channel, I like to do this technique. So I use Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. It works so good, I love this. I've tried some other products. They don't work as well in my opinion, but use a gel medium that you like, but this is the one that I recommend is Liquitex, not sponsored, I just like them. And so we'll just take a paint brush and brush on the Liquitex Matte Gel covering the entire canvas. And we do a generous amount. And then we're gonna take our image and we're gonna lay it down face down, trying not to move it too much, but trying to get it lined up a little bit first. And then we're gonna just smooth it out with our hands. And then we're gonna let that dry fully, probably at least two hours, but you wanna make sure that it's fully dry before you start to remove it. Now, once it's fully dry, we are going to take a wet washcloth and have a bowl of water on hand, and we're gonna just kind of dip our washcloth in there and get our the back of this paper really saturated. And then you will notice as you kind of rub it with a washcloth that it will remove some of the paper, but the image will remain. It's a really cool technique. I love this technique. And then once we're happy with the way it looks, then we can let that dry. Then we will attach our frame from the paint sticks by using some E6000 and hot glue for instant stick. And once that E6000 dries, it will be really sturdy. It will work out fantastic. And that's it. Isn't this so super cute? So for me, because I bought this in bulk, and I think that you could probably find something similar, I spent about $2 on the piece of wood. And then I spent a little over a dollar, around $1.33 for our frame. <laughs> and then a little extra in paint and supplies, and of course our printable. We're looking at about $5 for this. It's so cute. It's worth every penny of $5. And it's something that will last you year in and year out and have a custom piece with your family name. It's awesome. I love this and I hope you do too. 
So for my last Way Cool Dirt Cheap, I did a Halloween theme, and in that, I did these really cute trick-or-treat wood tags. Now that we've done that, we've got the back that we can do something with. I like to do dual duty if I can get two holidays out of one. And so we've got a blank canvas on the back side. If you missed this tutorial, I'll link it below on how I made the wood tags. Essentially, I cut them down on my miter saw. You could definitely do this by hand with a miter box so you don't have to have the power tools. I am just a huge advocate of power tools. I love them. They open up a whole world of possibilities. You know me, I like to be powerful. Powerful. We cut those down and then we sanded them down and then we made these really cute trick-or-treat tags. I love this. So in keeping with our Santa theme, one of our tags is gonna be painted out in Santa look. So we're gonna take some red paint and I'm gonna be using this Tuscan Red by Americana and then we're gonna paint that out all red. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a black belt and we're gonna create using painter's tape, a gold belt buckle. So in order to do that though, you know I don't like bleeding. So what we're gonna do is paint the same color that's underneath to prevent that bleeding so we get a nice crisp line. So the paint that I like to use for gold is Folk Art Pure Gold. It's part of their metallic line. I love this gold paint, it's my favorite. Now for the right tag. We are gonna paint that all out in white chalk paint. And then I have another free printable for you. It says Santa, please stop here. And you can just lay that down and use graphite paper to transfer the image onto your tag and then you fill it in with paint. Because I don't have that steady of a hand, using a stencil that I've created on my Cricut machine is gonna just be easier. So that's what I'm gonna be doing to get that nice crisp look. And so I'll put my stencil down and then I will put that white over the top of it so it doesn't let any bleeding happen. Then we're gonna take the Tuscan red paint and paint the Santa and the black chalk paint and paint the please stop here. And once that's dry, we'll peel back our stencil. Now, if you wanna make your own stencil, you can use the same image, download it into your Cricut software, and you will be set to go, and you can make your own stencil out of that. But if not, go ahead and use the image transfer technique. It's awesome. It works for most people. I just really like to use the stencil. It really, really helps me get the job done faster. And that's it. If this is the first time you're making these tags, it will be a couple of dollars to complete. But if you made them last month with us, and now you're getting a second use out of it, it's just a a little bit more in supplies and that brings that cost down for you to maybe 75 cents to a dollar. So this is really affordable. I am so excited for this next DIY because we are gonna be making a Santa pillow. And what's really cool about it is I didn't have to buy anything. This was all in my stash, ready to go. I didn't buy it specifically for this project and all of it is super affordable. So here's what we have. I had some red cotton fabric in my stash. You can get this for, I don't know, if you can find it on sale, maybe $1.50 to $2 a yard. Really, really affordable. I already had it, so it was good to go. They sell this microfiber cloth at Dollar Tree. And I'm like, that would make some really good, it's like Santa trim at some point. So I bought this a while back. Then I had this black grow grain ribbon from a tutorial last year. It was my Santa wreath, you can see here. And I still have some. Then I have this roll of faux leather is in a gold sparkle. I use it to kind of make earrings out of. So we're gonna use this for the belt buckle. Now I'm gonna cut mine out on my Cricut machine just because it will cut it more precise and be a little bit quicker for me. But I have provided a pattern for you. So this is gonna be all a part of these printables that are gonna all be at the same length that you don't have to go to multiple different places. But if you want to do this and you don't have a Cricut machine, all you need to do is print this out on your printer and use this as a pattern. We're gonna take the measurements of an existing pillow. Just take one of your regular pillows from your existing decor and this is just gonna be a temporary cover for it that you can use during the holiday season and then remove afterwards. Say it's an 18 by 18 inch pillow and add 
an inch and a half to each side. You, if I am using an 18 by 18 inch pillow, you're gonna cut out a front square to 19 and a half by 19 and a half inches. Then we're gonna be doing kind of an envelope style. We'll do plus five inches on either side so there's a little bit of an overlap. You're gonna need two pieces, 15 inches by 19 and a half. I hope that makes sense. So you're gonna add five inches to each one of those back flaps so they can overlap, but the width stays the same. I hope that you're following me on this. So for our fur trim, we are going to take about four to five inches. If you're doing the 18 inch pillow, you're gonna cut it to 19 and a half by four and a half inches. All right, so we're gonna sew, and I don't wanna lose you on this, so just hang with me. I promise you that if you've never sewn before, you can do it. I learned to sew when I was eight years old. It is totally doable and I don't want you to be scared. So what we're gonna do is I have pinned our little fur, fur <laughs> our little cleaning cloth <laughs> and I've pinned it to the center of our pillow. I've kind of lined it up and it's right where it should be. Now I've picked number 15 as a stitch for this because it's kind of going to match what is already on there for a stitch and we're going to go all the way around and it's not scary. I promise we got this. What I like about this sewing machine is you can slow it down or speed it up depending on your skill level. So if you're nervous, you can turn the speed all the way down and it won't go fast even if you push it all the way down. And then all you have to do is press down on the pedal and we will get sewing. All right, I can speed up, I think. Now that we've got our fur stitched on, it looks really cute, it's perfect. We're gonna take our black ribbon and our belt buckle that we made out of the faux leather, so cute, and we are gonna just weave it in by going up and then down, so you can see, then it looks like a belt buckle. And then we're just gonna center this on our pillow front and we are going to pin it to the sides and then we're gonna stitch this black belt into place right in the center. Now, if you wanted to, you could top stitch the belt on. I don't think we're gonna need to just because I think the push from the pillow will hold it into place. Could be wrong, I might eat my words later, but I think we're gonna be okay. Lucky and fortunate for us, the ends of these were already hemmed, and so all you do is fold it over and stitch it down and then make sure it's nice and ironed because we are gonna be doing an envelope pillow cover. We don't have to put in a zipper and it's just gonna be temporary. We're putting it over a pillow that is already part of like my regular decor. So we don't want it to be permanent. So an envelope pillow cover is a really good option for that. So in order to do that, we have the two finished pieces that have an additional five inches on either side. And that allows you for a seam allowance and it also allows you to kind of just overlap. And so what we're gonna do is we are gonna take the unfinished corners. We're gonna put corners together and we're gonna pin these. I'm trying not to put pins in my mouth because people have told me that's dangerous and I know it is. It's just a bad, nasty habit, so I'm not doing it this time. And then we're gonna kind of smooth this out a little bit, right? And then we're gonna take our second piece on our unfinished edges and match those up to these corners and make sure your finished side is down. This is such an easy way to make a pillow, really. I almost put it in my mouth. Can't do that anymore. I gotta set a good example. I promise you sewing is not that hard. Like I tell you all the time, just get a little brave. Something that you haven't done before, but it's one that you can totally learn. Okay, we're doing the same thing on the other side. Basically, I've got a pin in every corner and two in the middle of each panel. Now we're gonna just sew all the way around. and then we'll clip the corners and then we'll flip it out and we'll reveal our pillow cover. And then we have a really cute Santa pillow cover to cover up 
one of your regular pillows that you use in your everyday decor. So we've got a couple bucks in ribbon. We've got maybe 75 cents in the gold glitter, $1 in the fur trim and a couple. So we're talking no more than $5 for this cute, pillow cover that is so adorable and so festive and so traditional Christmas. It just screams it, doesn't it? So cute, I love this pillow. So next up, we are doing our wood canvas. If you've been following me all year on these way cool dirt cheap episodes, you will know that we have this wood canvas. It actually it looks like that and you can pick it up at Walmart for about $5. It's 10 by 10 inches and we've painted the interior a white chalk paint and the frame portion black and we've used it like this for every single way cool dirt cheap episode so last time we did this october 31 it's so cute and what we do is i just cut this out in craft paper and i've attached it with some silly putty not silly putty silly putty would probably not work as good so tacky putty and so what we can do is just very carefully peel this off of the frame and reveal a blank black and white canvas so this time what i've done is i've created a printable i have printed it out on a red and white striped paper because i just thought that that would be really festive for christmas this is an eight and a half by 11. now the width of this actually fits in there pretty good and so then we will just need to cut off a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom for it to be centered in our frame now all I I'm gonna do is tack this down with the same tacky putty so it's not permanently affixed because we like to use this over and over again so I'd like to use it again I picked up a package of four of these little chalkboard tags at Dollar Tree they're gonna work perfectly for this because it says days until Christmas and all we're gonna do is right in the middle between days until and Christmas we are going to glue this I'm gonna just hot glue this to the page Paper. Now there's a little hole because this is meant to be, I think like a gift tag or some kind of tag like that. But I saw these at um, Hobby Lobby and they're just little holly and berries. And all I'm gonna do is hot glue one of these to cover up that hole. And then you don't even know that it was meant to be a tag. So this is very flexible to whatever you want to do for your decor. Honestly, I got my red and white striped piece of paper at Hobby Lobby on their four for a dollar sales. So we're a couple of bucks into this. And if you are doing the frame for the first time, you need to add that on. It will be an additional $5. But if you've been doing these all along, then you've got like 75 cents this version i just love that because if you're using it holiday after holiday after holiday it just brings that price down 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 and i love that and you can use the same piece of decor over and over and over i love these really versatile pieces so another really affordable really cute santa themed diy So my favorite part of these way cool dirt cheap episodes is designing the awesome free printable, the main event, if you will. It's just my little gift to you. And as a thank you for watching and supporting my channel, this one, I am so excited about it. So this was our print from last month, trick or treat, smell my feet. <laughs> I loved doing this printable and I'm really excited to share with you what I've got this time. So I have designed this one with this red vintage Santa print. I love it. It's so cute. This is my favorite DIY because it's so easy. All you have to do is have it printed out and all we need to do is just stick it in the frame and call it a day and it's so easy. I love that part. Now I also designed several other vintage Santas so if the red doesn't work in your scheme I also have this green one that will be for sale in my Etsy shop. I also have a teal one that is also available in my Etsy shop and all of the Santas come with the French stripe so if you want the French stripe on this red Santa one it's available in my Etsy store so as far as cost on this this is a frame I've had forever so I've always just called this frame for free it's one that I think I picked up at a thrift store for maybe a dollar many 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 moons ago and then just painted out in a black color the one that I'm showing you here today is in a 16 by 20 20 size, but you can also shrink it down. So the only cost that I have invested in it is for the print that I had printed at Walgreens. Make sure you use a coupon. And so that was $7.99. So 
that's the total cost for our huge 16 by 20 piece of art. But if you wanted to do something a little bit smaller, you could put it in a Dollar Tree frame, print it out on your own printer, and you have it for maybe like a dollar fifty for an eight by ten size. All right, so here's the deal. I really don't like my master bedroom. We bought this house furnished and I wouldn't have picked out pretty much a single thing in here, including the wall color. <laughs> it's kind of this ugly butter yellow color. I just do not like it at all. The only thing that I really do like at this point is the nightstand that we made over in a previous episode. We're gonna be bringing in its partner for over on this side of the room that shows the really cheap, inexpensive nightstand that was here to begin with. And I don't know if you're like me, but it seems like my master bedroom has been pushed aside for way too long and it shouldn't because this is the room where you come to recharge your batteries, to gear up for the next day and your long, busy, hectic weeks. And this room should be a sanctuary, a place that is restful and inviting and makes you feel good. And to give myself that little extra kick in the pants that I needed to get this project underway, I decided to decorate it for Christmas. So we are gonna be giving this room a makeover. We're gonna be painting, adding some curtains and doing a lot of fun projects. We are gonna give it a huge transformation and do it on a budget. So I'm gonna go get changed into my paint clothes. The room is painted and the real fun can begin. Here's where the rustic meets glam is really gonna come into play because instead of buying curtains just for a few weeks to go with more of that farmhouse look, I decided to just go ahead and buy curtains that I love and that is going to be the direction that I'm taking my master bedroom in going forward. And I am so excited because they are so gorgeous. I found these at Home Goods. They're kind of like an ivory velvet. They've got a pinch pleat top and this beautiful kind of like brooches at every pinch pleat. And they're also going to go with this curtain rod that I've had for a while that I picked up on clearance for like seven bucks with the crystal edge and that really plays into the nightstand. So it all works really well together for the direction I'm taking this room. And we're gonna make it work for Christmas as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang these and then we'll go ahead and steam and try to get some of the wrinkles out. I'm going to simply wrap the artwork also in the Buffalo Check wrapping paper, but instead of putting a wreath over the top of it, I'm going to be doing some vinyl lettering that says all I want for Christmas is you. And I just love that for a bedroom. I think it's really cute. I found one on the Cricut Design Studio that was pre-made, ready to go. All I have to do is hit make it, make sure everything looks good. And we are simply gonna cut it. I simply weed the vinyl to remove the unwanted portion and apply transfer tape. I am using removable vinyl so I can easily take it off the glass when the holiday season is over. Now it's time to hang them. I am so excited because this looks so cute. Now we're gonna add our throw pillows. I got an assortment and so we're gonna put them on now and this is definitely kind of like rustic farmhouse. I've got these awesome plaid pillows that ties like pretty much our entire color scheme together. So these are really good anchor pieces. We've got the red, we've got the black, we've got the gray and we've got the cream. The only thing we don't have in here is green and that's on the wall. And the green is really kind of acting as a neutral in here. I really like feather down and these were a great deal. These were like $19.99 and they're huge and they're down beautiful. Now we've got some Buffalo check throw pillows. And what I really liked 
about this particular one is it almost matches our stockings identically, even down to the fur. That was just kind of a lucky find. So this last pillow is a fun find because it's almost a knockoff for ones being sold right now at Pottery Barn. It's not an identical match, but it really looks like it could be part of the collection. And those ones are really expensive and this was $12. So we'll just throw that on there as well. And there we go. And then of course you need a soft, cozy throw. This is just one I had on hand. I just pictured myself falling into bed and hibernating for the rest of the winter. So now it's time to place our lantern. So we're gonna just place that over here. Now I brought the tree in that's been in my craft room and it's gonna go in this corner and we're gonna decorate it. I bought this tree a few years ago on an after clearance sale at Big Lots. It was like $15 on like 90% clearance. But as you can see, we've got a lot of lights out and I don't wanna go one by one and test each and every one to see what's going on. So I had some Christmas lights in my stash. We're gonna use them. And now I also wanna kinda of show you what I've got to work with as far as Christmas ornaments are concerned. Something that I really love to do is hang banners on my Christmas tree. I just like it. I think it adds a fun little touch. I made this one years ago. It was a printable I found on Pinterest. And I just printed it out and hung it with little mini clothespins. And I think it's gonna look good on this tree. I had a piece of artwork here that didn't quite match. So my solution for that was I printed out the lyrics to Silent Night in just a really subtle tone and I went and printed it out on an engineer print. Now this is a 24 by 36 and I'm going to be offering this as a free printable to you and I'm also going to do it in a 20 by 30 so you can have the option of putting it on like a foam core board and adding some trim. I've just used some tacky putty to tack it on temporarily for the holiday season for a couple of dollars. It's such a fun and cute addition. My extreme Christmas makeover on my master bedroom is done and I am absolutely thrilled how it turned out. I just love the mood that it sets. It's so festive and fun. I know that this is really going to bring the holiday spirit into my home and into my life this Christmas season. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to tell you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.